Mai, 28 female, younger brother, 24 male, and his fiancée, 23 female, are supposed to get married in the spring after being engaged for about a year. My younger brother has always been the golden child between the both of us to my mom, not to my dad. Him and his fiancée currently live with her, rent-free, might I add. My dad and I, on the other hand, have mixed feelings about this wedding. We both feel like my brother is rushing into things and not being financially smart. He just finished his bachelor program a year ago, is still trying to get on his feet and find a good full-time job in his field, and decides to spend thousands of dollars on a wedding. We sat him down and explained this to him and asked him what the rush was. Why not push it off for a few years and save up so you guys can really have the wedding of your dreams? He explained to us that his fiancée wants the wedding as soon as possible and doesn't want to wait. Well, his fiancée's family is pitching in a couple of thousand for the wedding. My dad reluctantly is pitching in a couple of thousand as well. All important later. Well, a few nights ago, I'm eating dinner with my husband when I get a call from my future sister-in-law. Convo starts out normal. Hey, how are you? Lousy weather we're having, etc, etc. Until she tells me she has a serious question to ask me. She asks me if she can use my wedding dress that I wore to my wedding just over a year ago. She explains that she can't afford one herself, that she absolutely loves mine and that it would be her something borrowed. I immediately shut her down and said I'm sorry, but no. This is a thousands of dollars dress we're talking about and that she'd have to get altered to fit her by the way too, so no way. We're not even close at all and barely talk, so like, what the heck? She starts begging and even starts crying and going on about how she can't afford one. I told her I'm sorry, but no. She then starts going on about how I'm not even financially helping her and my brother pay for the wedding, so the least I can do is let her use my dress. I told her the honest truth, that I think they're rushing into having a wedding and not being financially smart. She said she didn't care, she has a timeline and wants to be married by 25. I basically said to her that she's made her bed so now she has to lie in it and figure it out herself and if she can't afford her wedding dress then she shouldn't be having a wedding. Simple as that. She ran back to my mom and my brother to tell them what I said. They think I'm an idiot because I have the money to financially help my brother and his fiance, but I'm being selfish and unsupportive. They also think it's just a dress so what's the big deal? My dad is on my side and defending me and is now thinking of taking back his financial help due to the sheer audacity of my brother's fiancé asking me such a thing. Not the idiot. Tell her to use a sack of flour as a dress if she wants to get married so badly. The entitlement. Jesus, who pays for their sibling's wedding? Come on now. If my brothers wanted to get married, I would tell them congrats and I'll see you on your big day. Like, who asks anyone to contribute to their party? Please, don't give these people a dime. She has a terrible timeline plan, so now she gets to have a cheap wedding. Right, like, what the heck? I'll get my brothers a really nice gift, but financially contributing to their wedding? LOL no. Also, sister-in-law could just buy a cheap dress. I don't know why so many people get engaged and then immediately jump to, the only worthwhile wedding dress for me must cost thousands of dollars. I don't judge anyone for having an expensive wedding dress. More power to you. But if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. And in that case, there are so many other options that will still look stunning. If you do lend it to her, you'll probably never see it again because she'll give the excuse that it doesn't even fit you right anymore. Do not let this woman anywhere near your dress. How much did she and your brother pitch in for your wedding a year ago? Huh? You owe them nothing. Not your fault she has champagne dreams and a canned tuna budget. Blows my mind how entitled some can be. I, 35 male, am a very cheerful person by nature. I went through a lot of crap in life and I struggled a lot, but throughout it all I managed to keep an even temperament. I'm an optimist by nature, and I always try to maintain a cheerful and bright outlook on life. My wife, 34 female, is the opposite. She tends to get angry easily and is more cynical and jaded than me. We get along well for the most part, but she tends to always predict the worst. She always thinks about things that could go wrong and never really appreciates what we have. The problem is, as my kids are growing up, they're getting imbibed with her energy. They're starting to become incredibly cynical with dour pronouncements on employment and the economy, constantly trying to bring up incredibly depressing news. They seem to enjoy talking about corruption and downfall and the bad things about our life and society in general. I read about some scientist who discovered that if you move your face into a smile, like hold that expression, that muscle movement actually has an impact on your mood. 
and you become happier. Last month, I decided to put this in practice. For every single negative or depressing thing they say, I take a dollar away from my kids' allowances. They begrudgingly went along with it at first, but now they're getting really annoyed at me and everyone is calling me an idiot for this. I don't understand what's so wrong about trying to keep my family from devolving into miserable people who see negativity and evil all around them, but my family says that I'm being controlling. Am I the idiot for implementing a pessimism tax? You are the idiot. That sounds like something my dad would do because only his feelings mattered. Three out of three of his adult children don't talk to him and he doesn't know his two grandchildren. Maybe you should consider what future you want with your kids. Looks like OP's going to need to implement a reconciliation tax soon. OP, what you're doing is incredibly unhelpful. You're punishing your kids for expressing a human emotion in completely non-harmful ways. You're preventing them from expressing opinions and forcing them to pretend to have emotions and opinions they don't have. That is incredibly unhealthy. It's used as a therapy tool and can help. The trick isn't to smile the way you think a smile should look, but just to barely move the corners of your mouth up and relax your face, which will calm you down, not make you happy or forget the crap in the world, just make the moment more bearable. Also, I don't see how this is an effective therapeutic tool to relieve short-term anxiety, became, every time you feel sad I will make it worse by taking money from you. OP sounds tiring to be around. No wonder the family's always moody. Yeah, forcing them to mask their emotions and not talk about negative things will actually make them more cynical. Why do you think counselling and therapy are so popular? Because talking about the bad crap and letting your emotions out is healthy. OP, you're forcing ill health on your kids. If you keep this up, don't be surprised if they feel they can't talk to you and you're alone in your old age. When I, 36 female, was younger, my parents would take my siblings and me on a trip for our 10th birthday. It was our family tradition and they wanted to continue with my kids, Sadie, pre-tween, and Jamie, baby. Sadie's birthday is soon, so my parents told her that they will be taking her and Jamie to Disney. They're only paying for my kids, so my husband, Sam, 34, and I have decided to save up to join the trip and make memories together as a family, us, our kids, and my parents. Everything was fine, but my husband's sister, sister-in-law Emma, 29 female, heard about the trip and wants her daughter, Avery Tween, to also join along and has been forcefully trying to get her way even after I've said no countless times. Emma is a single mom, dad's not in the picture, so it's been very difficult for her to be able to provide Avery with certain experiences and opportunities that my kids have been given. Since Avery didn't have a party or a big gift, Emma thinks Avery is entitled to a Disney trip too because my parents, who are in no way related to her, are taking Avery's cousins. I thought this was so rude of her to even ask because why would my parents pay for her daughter's trip when she's not their grandchild? When I told her this, she then kept insinuating that since Sam and I are paying for ourselves to go, we could probably save for Avery to go too. I love my niece and feel guilty she isn't able to have such experiences but it shouldn't be a financial burden my husband and I have to constantly bear. We already help a lot by buying groceries, babysitting, paying for sports teams, school supplies. When I sternly told her my parents won't be paying and that my husband and I don't want to or have to pay either, then she had the audacity to drop the we're all family, it takes a village to raise a child card on me. I have helped her so much. Sam and I have just lost it on her because she isn't even appreciative of what we've already done to help her provide necessities for her child, yet she always wants to ask for more. Not once has she suggested paying for some of Avery's plane ticket, park pass, hotel. She just wants us to bear this cost so her daughter can live a life she can't provide for. I know it sounds terrible, but I hate having to be the one who has to feel guilty and pay up so that Avery can live like our family when Emma won't even try to pay for some of it. I told her my final decision is no, unless she wants to pay for Avery, then I don't mind taking care of Avery on the trip and will let her come along, which Emma said no to because she can't afford it. Now my daughter is saying Avery told her I ruined their trip and Avery hates me. I think Emma already told Avery she'd be coming on the trip before even speaking to me and now had to tell me she can't go anymore because I won't let her. On the one hand, Sam and I want to stand our ground and won't pay, but also don't want to ruin our and our kids' relationship with our niece. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. 
It takes a village means loving and supporting, not taking every vacation together. The best you can do with a family member who talks behind your back is take the high road, especially in your communication with the kiddo. Yes, it takes a village to raise a child to adulthood, but that village has to start with the parents understanding that the village isn't responsible for everything. They're there to help your child become a better person, not pay for Mickey Mouse ears. The worst thing is that Emma is basically teaching Avery to be entitled, so you should try to correct that behavior when it's still possible, as a part of the village, of course. Wow, the entitlement of Emma. Bless you all for the help you've given over the years, but... This is exactly the problem when you do too much for someone. They often become spoiled and entitled. Instead of gratitude, it's grabbing. Instead of appreciation, it's expectation. Emma has beyond trampled over your boundaries and is not a rational person. Personally, I stop with all the financial help until she wakes up and starts to appreciate it. I, 48 male, married my current wife a few months ago and now we live together with my only daughter, teen, Lucy. My wife has an older daughter, 21, who's in college and wants to pursue a career in fashion. I've tried to generate stronger bonds between my new wife and her daughter with Lucy because I think she needs active female figures in her life. Lucy's mom lives traveling around the world because of her work as a humanitarian worker. She's a great mother and person, but she's obviously not as present in our daughter's daily life as we would all like. Lucy's relationship with my wife is very good now, but she doesn't seem to connect with her stepsister. Last weekend, my daughter was sleeping at a friend's house, and my stepdaughter was visiting us. At one point, she entered my daughter's room. I'm not sure why, she said she wanted to look at herself in Lucy's makeup mirror. She saw my daughter's cheerleader uniform that was folded over the chair and asked me if she could use it to take some pictures for Instagram. She's very active in social media for her fashion career, posting different outfits and looks. I said yes, without doubt. I assume teenage girls don't mind using each other's clothes and things like that socially, as it was her stepsister, not a stranger. She posted the pictures and very soon my daughter texted me very mad and said that I shouldn't have let her use it. I honestly don't think I did anything wrong. I think Lucy is trying to generate conflict because she doesn't like her stepsister. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Two levels. Your stepdaughter should never have even been in the daughter's room without her permission. This is your daughter's clothing, not yours. A text would have cleared up if she minded. The other level is that if this is the uniform for your daughter's school, then they might have issues about the use of their logos, colors, and branding. If they do, those concerns will fall on your daughter's participation in cheer. Yes, girls borrow each other's stuff, with permission. OP, you do realize your daughter could get in trouble with her squad, especially if she goes to public school. I don't know how it is everywhere, but when I was in high school and my two daughters, the younger of whom was graduating in two months, students were not permitted to let other students wear their activities and sports uniforms and aren't to wear their uniforms unless it was for school-sanctioned activities and events. Letting an adult wear her cheerleading uniform for social media clout could land her in hot water. Just want to add, Lucy very well may not see your stepdaughter as her stepsister. Consider they don't live together and will never have grown up together or been raised together. You can't force them to be close, considering the usual foundations for step-sibling relationships don't exist. But way to make your daughter feel unsafe in her own home and like she has no right to autonomy, space, or agency. Bonus, you are the idiot for assuming that all teenage girls love to share clothes. I don't even believe you. You know she doesn't have a relationship with your stepdaughter. Yes, this. Good luck with your relationship with your daughter going forward. And by the way, your stepdaughter set you up. Is the mirror in your daughter's room the only one in the house? stepdaughter knew exactly where that uniform was and what she was going to do with it. My brother and sister-in-law snooped in my now adult niece's diary from when she was a child and teenager. My niece wasn't big on writing in it ever, but occasionally did over a decade of her childhood, from age 7 to 17. It wasn't something she thought much about unless she was writing in it. What my brother and sister-in-law found in the diary left them with many negative feelings. Sister-in-law is my brother's second wife and is not the mother of my niece and her older brother, my nephew. She married my brother 18 months after his first wife died. My niece was seven and my nephew was eight. 
In the diary, my niece had written that her stepmother was second best, that she wished she could trade her to get her mom back, and apparently there were a number of pages about how she felt her stepmother didn't deserve to be there for certain moments over her mom. My brother and sister-in-law actually confronted my niece about this. Sister-in-law brought up she went to find it in the first place because she always felt second best and how niece's wedding was making it even worse because she, sister-in-law, wasn't invited to do much with niece. Niece was angry they'd read it and said she thought she'd trashed it before she moved out. My brother thought that meant she regretted writing that and she said no, but she was never planning to let those thoughts get out. That she and her brother, and there were pages about him and niece saying the same stuff regarding sister-in-law, had agreed it would be something between them. My brother said they should have spoken up and he could have fixed it. She told him that that would never have happened. That they only had one mother and no, that one mother was not sister-in-law. Sister-in-law apparently asked her directly if she still felt that way about her. She felt she didn't deserve her place in their lives, was easily traded for their long-dead mother, her words not mine, and was nothing more than her father's wife in her eyes. My niece confirmed this. I heard about what happened from my niece and nephew originally. They warned me my brother was ready to vent to anyone who would listen. He and sister-in-law did try to use me to vent to, and I told them I didn't agree with their actions re-snooping and didn't want to hear from them on it. Then about a week ago, they were telling our parents all about it and whining about what awful things my niece had written. I told them they shouldn't have snooped if they didn't want to learn hurtful things. My brother said I was being an unsympathetic witch. Maybe he's right. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, you're right. And it's sad that they're holding the thoughts of a grieving child over her head. She has the right to still value her relationship with her birth mother. No one should be asking her to rank the parental figures in her life. That's why we should never ask questions we don't want to know the answer to. It's the stepmom and your brother's snooping that created the hurtful situation everyone is in now. I wasn't a grieving child, just a witchy preteen, and I remember writing in my diary that I hated my mom. Did I really? No, but it would have devastated my mom to read it. I also said I wanted to marry Justin M in my grade 5 class. A diary contains private thoughts at that time of someone's life. Private. Not to be read by others and certainly not to be brought into public discussion. I think they knew the answers before looking. They just, for some reason, wanted confirmation. Maybe they hoped for a very tiny bit that the diary was going to say the opposite. But if that were the case, then they were just lying to themselves. She shouldn't have dug for answers she wasn't going to like. Play stupid games. Win stupid prizes.